Inverse systems are used in signal processing to reverse the distortion involved in physical transmission of signals or other types of undesired effects. And if we have a LTI system that's described by a difference equation that serves as a model for a distortion of some sort, we like to know when can we obtain an inverse system. So here we have a block diagram showing some signal of interest, x of n, passing through a system h to obtain y of n. Now what we'd like to do is undo the distortion that's introduced by h with some other system, h sub i, an inverse system, to recover the original signal x. So in the time domain we have that y of n is h of n convolved with x of n and therefore we're looking for an inverse system h i of n for which h i of n convolved with y of n will give me back x of n. You can do the algebra here and find that this implies that h i of n convolved with h of n must be equal to delta of n. If we express this relationship in terms of system functions implies that h of z times h i of z must be 1. In other words, h i of z must be the inverse of h of z. Now for this to hold, of course, the ROCs of h of z and h i of z must intersect. Now if we want h i of z to be stable, then the ROC must include the magnitude of z equals 1. Now if you look at this expression, we have h i is 1 over h of z. Clearly h of z cannot go to 0 on the magnitude of z equals 1 because then h i of z would blow up somewhere in the magnitude of z equals 1 and we wouldn't have the ROC including the unit circle. This implies that the magnitude of h of z evaluated at z equals e to the j omega, in other words the DTFT, must be greater than zero. It can't equal zero because then we would have a situation where our inverse system would be undefined. For example, if I have the classic ideal low pass filter, which has unit gain in some interval, say minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then it's zero outside of that interval, well, we can't invert this system. And it makes sense, right? Because if I pass a signal through this, I'm going to zero out all the frequency components in this band here above pi over 2. And once I've set those to zero, I have no way of recovering what the original number was. Because zero times any number is equal to zero. Now if we have our system that we wish to invert being described by a difference equation and it's linear and time invariant, then we know that the system function h of z is this ratio of polynomials in z inverse where we have the sum k equals 0 to m, bk, z minus k in the numerator and the sum ak, z to the minus k in the denominator. We can rewrite this in pole zero form to obtain it as a product of zeros where the zeros are at ck divided by a product of n poles where the poles are at dk. So since we're not allowed to have the magnitude of h of z go to zero on the unit circle, clearly we cannot have any zeros with unit magnitude because h of e to the j omega would go to zero at that point. Now the inverse system can be obtained by remembering that h of z times h i of z has to be equal to 1. So h i of z is a0 over b0 and in the numerator we have the product of the poles whereas in, of the original system whereas in the denominator we have the product of the zeros of the original system. The question arises again is that we don't know exactly what the region of convergence is here other than that it must intersect with the region of the convergence of h of z. But we do know that h of z is stable and causal when the magnitude of the poles are all inside the unit circle. Similarly, that implies that h i of z must, will be stable and causal when the magnitude of the ck's are inside the unit circle because the ck's are the poles of h i of z. So for a stable and causal system h of z, to have a stable and causal inverse system h i of z, all the poles and zeros of h of z must be inside the unit circle. Let's look at an example and we'll do a case of multipath communication where I have some signal that I'm transmitting, x of n, 
and I'm receiving it at another location y of n, and I assume that my transmission path is a direct path and then a slightly longer reflected path. We can model this in a simple way with some approximations by saying that we'll describe y of n as being equal to x of n plus alpha x of n minus 1. So we'll assume that the direct path has no delay and that the delay of the reflected path relative to the direct path is one sample. And furthermore, that the strength of the reflected path is alpha relative to the direct path. And if I have this kind of distortion of a transmitted signal, the question is, can I find a stable and causal inverse system to reverse the distortion? Well, let's define the system function h of z from the difference equation. We see that it's just 1 plus alpha z inverse. So here we have a pole at 0 and a 0 at z equals negative alpha, as I've sketched here. So the existence of a stable and causal inverse system requires that all the zeros of h of z be inside the unit circle. Therefore, to have a stable and causal inverse system, we must have the magnitude of alpha to be less than 1. Now, in most physical systems, that's going to certainly be the case because there's a loss of energy at a reflection, and there's also for a longer propagation path, one would expect that there would be a loss of energy as well. In general, for physical systems, this is going to be true. And our inverse system then is just the 1 over h of z. In other words, it's 1 divided by 1 plus alpha z inverse. And we can convert that back to a difference equation, which is y of n plus alpha y of n minus 1 equal x of n. So this difference equation here will invert the difference equation for the multipath that we started with. And clearly, if h of z is a system described by a difference equation, then h i of z, which is just 1 over h of z, can also be described by a difference equation. So let's take another example where h of z is z inverse minus 1 third divided by 1 minus 0 0.9 z inverse. Well, this system has a pole at z equals 0.9. So clearly, this system can be both stable and causal. And if I take the inverse system, I'm going to have 1 over h of z. So I have 1 minus 0 0.9 z inverse in the numerator, and then z inverse minus a third in the denominator. And I could rewrite that as minus 3 times 1 minus z, 3 z inverse in the denominator, with the numerator staying as 1 minus 0.9 z inverse. And in this form, you clearly see that there's a pole at z equals 3 in the inverse system. So I have a 0 at z equals 0.9 and a pole at z equals 3. Whereas in the original system, I had a pole at 0.9 and a 0 at z equals 3. So if I think about trying to find the impulse response, I could make two choices for the region of convergence. If I chose magnitude of z less than 3 to be the region of convergence, that is this interior region, then I would be including the unit circle and I would have a stable inverse system, but the problem is, is it would be left-sided and it would not be causal. On the other hand, if I chose magnitude of z greater than 3, I would get a system which is causal because then this pole would be expanded in terms of the right-sided inverse z transform but it wouldn't be stable because we no longer have magnitude z equals 1 in the region of convergence. So in this particular case, we can't find an inverse system that is both stable and causal. We could find a stable inverse system that's not causal or a causal inverse system that's not stable but can't find both. Now if I were to change h of z a little bit, let's suppose that it was z inverse minus 3 over 1 minus 0 0.9 z inverse. Well then, my inverse system, instead of having a pole at z equals 3, has a pole at z equals 1 third, and clearly now I could find an inverse system that is both stable and causal. So the locations of the poles and the zeros tell us a lot about a system. It tells us whether a system is stable and causal if all the poles are inside the unit circle, and furthermore, if all the zeros are inside the unit circle, then that system also has a stable and causal inverse system.
if the original system was described by a difference equation so that we get a pole zero form, then the inverse system will also be described by a difference equation. 